a couple of days, people are like, what happened, where'd you go? And, uh, yeah, so I've been pretty busy, so I uh, wasn't able to get out some videos. And uh, last night, there was a shouldn't get to haul, so I didn't do any videos yesterday. So, and today I'm in recovery. <laughs> so, and it's cold, it's cold in the house, that's why I got my two gun. Uh, got my ear. So, okay, so World War Three update. Uh, so much to cover here, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, I'll try to hit the points, and then I might repeat myself if, like I normally do. Uh, Canada is sending another 200 million, uh, totaling 400 million, uh, to the Ukraine. Uh, you know, again, you're, you know, we have to retire when we're 67 here in Canada, but yet we we have all the spare money to throw into the Ukraine for whatever reason. Uh, there's also been, uh, you know, recent activity with, uh, you know, English-speaking mercenaries that were, uh, you know, pretty much running around in the Ukraine as well. You have the Blackwater guys, they've been there for months, uh, pretty much since this whole thing started. You also have Putin, or not Putin, but uh, a Russian general out there saying, hey, look, uh, the weapons they have, like the S-300, the S-400, the S-500 missile systems is nothing compared to what their, their secret weapons. Uh, uh, and they're saying that uh, there's not a single nuclear weapon or even the new secret advanced stuff uh, that the Americans have that can stop uh, their weapons. Uh, some of their warheads, which Russia is now going to be getting another 50 missiles. Uh, I don't. I can't remember what the delivery time is. Um, uh, 50 nuclear missiles. So, and these warheads that they have also have decoys in them. Uh, not the warhead itself, but there's like warheads and decoy warheads to uh, so anything like a Patriot missile system coming up to meet it. Uh, it might be just shooting at it, dud stuff like that. And there's also. Uh, these missiles can actually outmaneuver. Uh, or may, I don't know how well they maneuver, but they, they also can maneuver as they're coming in, making them almost impossible to hit. So we don't know what these secret weapons are, but Russia's saying, yeah, well, we, you know, we know that the, the Americans have been doing the Star Wars program for a long time, so you know they, they've taken precautions. And remember, uh, the United States' is number one ally in the Middle East, uh, Israel, uh, is also sold, you know, uh, U.S. military technology to China over the years. They, you know, they, they they get it given to them. Uh, by the U.S., and then they turn around, they just give it to the, uh, sell it to the, uh, to the Chinese. So that means they're probably selling it to the Russians as well. Uh, on top of that, we also have, uh, you know, more drills, spies kind of showing up everywhere. There was some spies, I think, in New York caught Russian spies. Uh, remember a few weeks ago or a few a month or so ago, uh, Prime Minister Harper was talking about uh, uh, looking for spies in our um, our war games stuff like that uh, it's a big concern so we're seeing that ramp up and then of course with the economic stuff with the uh, the oil prices expected to go lower they're again Saudi Arabia can drop it down to like four bucks a barrel and still make a profit they, they, you know uh, the other thing too is that you know uh, the uh, oil going down has hurt Russia but it hasn't hurt them as quite as bad as you think uh, Greece is talking about <clears throat> I think it's Greece or Spain. I think Spain, sorry, is talking about lifting the sanctions on Russia. Uh, they're also, you have to understand that the new party that, or sorry, Greece, uh, the new party in Greece is a communist party. Uh, you know, uh, the, you know the, the guy, maybe, I don't know if they're all in that, but the guy running it, the, I can't remember his name, but uh, Stefan Molyneux did a really nice uh, kind of, uh, hi, you know, history breakdown. So basically, these are the extreme left. Uh, so, I, I can't see how that could possibly go wrong, but <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and they're they're talking about you know like you know getting out of sanctions and with Russia and stuff like that. So it looks like uh, they made a deal with Russia that if they need some help financially, that Russia might come to come and help them. And the Russians said they they said yes. I don't know what the deal is going to be. You know if they're going to forgive debt, if they're going to you know monetize. Their debt. I, I have no idea what what the deal is, but they've been talking. So we're seeing again a slow breakup of the uh, EU and you had Ireland out there uh, people in Ireland out there uh, you know basically protesting austerity and stuff like that again people are around the world we're in a global depression and of course right on the mainstream media uh, we have the CBC out there saying look all the growth that we had in Canada is not quite as good as what we said it was over the last past year uh, instead of you know you know creating uh, uh, something like 20,000 jobs a, a month. We were only creating like something like 15 or 10. I can't remember the, the exact. But anyway, the, the unemployment is much higher than what they said. It's, you know, over 6.7. Don't quote me on the number. Something like that. So again, we have 
all this lying that's going on, and of course in the states there's a retail apocalypse going on there. Uh, just layoffs everywhere. It's it's store closures. Uh, the uh, Baltic, uh, I think it's called the Baltic Dry Index. Don't quote me on that. Uh, basically, it's all like stuff like copper, steel, uh, lumber, uh, all those things that. that this is the one thing uh, that they can't really manipulate because it's like, you know, either you sold it or you didn't. You know, it's not like gold where they sell. Uh, they sell gold, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, futures contracts where they get um, basically an IOU slip and you, you hang on to that and say, I got XYZ bars of gold. But, you know, they have like one bar of gold with like 20 names on it. And we have more gold flying around into, you know, places like Switzerland to get melted down into uh, the Chinese denominations and stuff like that. And of course, uh, the Swiss have done, you know, depegging from the euro and now kind of, again, becoming, getting ready to, to do business with the Chinese. Uh, again, we're seeing people jump ship. I mean, the, 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 the Titanic has hit the iceberg pretty hard. Uh, the band's still playing, but the ship is still going down. And that's, I think, the battle lines are being drawn now of who's going to stay neutral, who's going to pick this side, who's going to pick the other side. Uh, and again, there won't be any, an all out economic collapse. Uh, in my opinion, until actual war comes, because that's how they hide the collapse, right? And uh, the thing is, is that uh, what I've been saying for the last past, pretty much since 2008, or maybe 2010 when I started making geopolitical videos, is that the collapse wasn't going to be like your typical 1929 stock market collapse, where it's it's just brutally obvious, and you know who did it. Uh, and, you know, all these people, you can say, okay, well, they did this to us, and we can put them in jail. It's going to be more of a slow bleed-out, where everybody's just becoming gradually more poor. And, of course, in Davos, uh, I didn't catch any too much highlights from Davos, but I got, got a few of them. You have all these, you know, billionaires and, and stuff like that that are really, really worried. Uh, and something I've been talking about, and if you've been following my channel for a while, you've heard me say that the world's elites are buying, like, you know, getaway resorts and uh, uh, bunkers, and uh, you know they're they're really worried about like a pitchfork revolution coming for them. Uh, and these people, that's one of the things they were talking about in Davos. So you have okay, the mainstream media that's out there saying there's nothing to see here, nothing's wrong, but yet you've got the world's elites, the people. I mean, these are the people in the know. I mean, it doesn't mean they're all you know out there to conquer the world, but it does mean that they know, they can see the trend, they they know what they're forecasting. You know, that they're. they're buying extra security, they're, uh, uh, you know, basically getting ready to hide their families, they're stockpiling on resources and stuff like that to, to be able to get it, get the heck out of jo Dodge. So there's some people that'll be buying resorts in places like New Zealand, but I, I don't think it's really going to, you know, I'd imagine people are like going to be hiding in like the Marshall Islands and, you know, all kinds of places like that, like little, you know, they're going to be hiding in mountaintops somewhere, you know, like, you know, there's going to be, but these people will never be able to show their faces in public again. Uh, there was a video. I think it was on RT. Uh, John McCain was, I don't know where he was speaking, but in walks Harry Kissinger, and there was a group of people there saying, you know, arrest uh, Harry Kissinger for war crimes, which, you know, at least arrest him for war crimes, crimes against humanity, and stuff like that. So people are, you know, these type of protests are not that uncommon. But McCain, you can just hear the sentiment in McCain's voice, like, the, the guy is a complete lunatic. Uh really has to get, he's in Moby Dick mode, you got to get that great white whale. And the great white whale for him is to arm uh, the Syrian rebels, uh, which is basically ISIS. Now, that said, it looks like Canadian soldiers once again became, uh, came under fire from ISIS. Uh, yeah, they were basically, uh, you know, fighting with, the, I guess, the Kurds or whatever. And it looks like this week uh, passed, once again, they came under fire and of course, here in Canada, it's like, okay, well, are they in the, you know, for, uh, you know, for soldiers that are not in a combat role, um, you know, why are they getting shot at so much, right, right, so, but it is a war zone, it's, it, I don't see this as, a, see them as, uh, they're, they have about 600 personnel, uh, and uh, 12 air, CF-18s there, the personnel are basically the guys and, and girls basically, you know, keeping everything running, uh, most of them, the forward observers, I think, are 69 of them, and, Remember, like a lot, a lot, you might see see that as a really high number, but it really isn't, depending on how you look at it. Because again, you you know, you're gonna have probably twelve to thirty mechanics, uh, aviation mechanics per airplane. I mean, for every one hour flown, you're looking at minimum of twelve hours of routine maintenance. So you know that doesn't account for things breaking and what have you. That's why they have six airplanes there uh, as a backup in case you know. Uh, so you know, before you know it, you've got you know all this stuff that has to get run around. It it, it takes an awful lot to keep these things in the air. Uh, that said, they are hitting, you know, all these, you know, things pinpoint accurately. Uh, but there's a problem, like when you, and uh, 
the X-22 report guy there over at the X-22, uh, Dave, you know, he says, look, we got the state-of-the-art equipment, but yet they can't beat these guys, you know. And again, this goes back to something I've been saying for a while. It's the idea, it's not, there's not just a handful of people there uh, wearing a, a uniform saying, hey, I'm an ISIS guy. They, no, it, it's the, the whole, re, it's, it's, it's like a tribe. It's, it's, it's a whole process of uh, lifestyle. It, it's Sharia law is what it is. It's just the ISIS guys are basically, you know, you know, you know, all these tribes that have kind of merged into one trying to take over the region. And that's why, like, the Free Syrian Army is basically, is ISIS. Uh, and, of course, we keep arming them. Uh, you know, I don't know how much Canada's armed them, but I'm sure we're probably doing it as well. Uh, all the, the aid drops that keep getting into their hands, uh, you know, dropping them weapons and stuff. You have to understand, they're the proxy army. Uh, because they're getting the job done to a degree, but they're the proxy army against Assad. And it, the fight against ISIS is more about, uh, you know, if you really listen to the politicians, they're pretty much telling you, uh, maybe not so directly, but they are telling you basically, even though Joe Biden pretty much said it directly, is basically they take the CIA, they take the money over Saudi Arabia. From Saudi Arabia, they buy weapons probably from the Russians and again from the Americans, and then they send it to Libya. And then from Libya, they run in, these uh, ISIS guys run into... Uh, uh, run into Syria, and of course these guys are to overthrow Assad. They're you know, they're they're not going to the the week they overthrow Assad, you're going to see it like maybe two weeks after probably uh, ISIS will be just completely you know just destroyed like overnight. You'll just see A tens flying everywhere, you know. You might even see boots on the ground in, in you know official capacity. Right now there's no boots on the ground because all, all the guys all are, all the mercenaries are basically wearing uh, you know sandals or something. I don't know. But there, there's you know there's I forget how many thousands of, of uh, U.S. troops are there right now, quite a bit. Next to that, Israel has done something, uh, and this is the thing about Israel that really you know uh, people don't get. You know you have these people that are we have to protect Israel uh, all all you know all the way. And stuff like that. Now, my take on Israel is this: number one, why are we why are we giving them money? Uh, and, and Canada basically had uh, Harper and uh, our uh, <coughs> our safety minister Stephen Blainley uh, at the UN, you know, basically you know fessing their love for Israel again. Uh, so you know, it's very clear sided. Uh, one thing about Harper is he does pick a he picks a line and he sticks with that line. This is what my government's doing and stuff like that. So he's pretty easy to to see where he's going. Uh, he's not so abstract where, you know, watch this hand, but, you know, don't see what the other hand's doing kind of thing. Uh, so we know that, that you know, uh, they, they've clearly sided with Israel. Now, the thing is, is what is Israel has done in the last past week or so from the making of this video is they've, well, maybe two weeks, uh, they've done airstrikes, okay? And apparently they were striking uh, ISIS, okay? And they accidentally killed a uh, Iranian um you know, they said it was an attack against Hezbollah, and they killed an Iranian general. And the Iranians are pretty mad about this. So, again, we have, you know, the, was it, uh, they keep saying ISIS doesn't have an air force. Yeah, it's, it's the Israeli air force. That's their, that's their air force, you know. Uh, so, with that, the, the Iranians have kind of bounced back, and, and they're getting, there's a lot of movements uh, that the Iranians are getting ready to do now. And they've basically, like anything, they said, look, you know, <laughs> you know you're going you're gonna to get, you're going to get payback for this. Right now, the Israelis, the only thing that saves the Israelis is that, you know, they have all these other countries willing to go and die for them. I think the Israeli government has estimated something like for every one Israeli citizen that gets killed, they're willing to sacrifice something like 30 or 35 Americans and, I guess, whatever, coalition forces. So that, that, that's, the, that's how they estimate this. Um, I have nothing against the, you know, the Israelis as, as a people, but when we're talking governments, the governments are pretty evil. Uh, so, Right now, you got Iran is basically kind of, uh, you know, kind of making some moves with, uh, you know, Russia. They're basically going to be taking, probably in the spring, some S-300 missile systems. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see missiles flying from Iran over Syria, taking out Israeli airplanes at some point. Uh, or even coalition airplanes saying, hey, look, you're just too close to our airspace. And obviously the Iranians are, are helping Assad. Uh, again, if they were to... You know, like, again, all these airstrikes and stuff like that, yeah, okay, Canada, yeah, they are striking a few uh, ISIS targets, but really it's it's minuscule what we're doing uh, there. And same with all the other coalition forces. They're not really, like, yeah, they're, they're leveling cities and stuff like that, sure, and they're killing the odd ISIS fighter, but they're really going after Assad's target. They're going after the infrastructure, anything that can help them out. 
And, you know, uh, the, the thing is, is that uh, even though the Canadian generals have come out and said, yeah, we stopped ISIS, at, you know, they're not getting past the Canadians, uh, you know, which is, I guess, a good thing. But uh, even at that, you know, like you have, like, again, guys like McCain out there saying we have to arm the Free Syrian Army, but yet they've got uh, Kurds that uh, the, uh, the PKK, I think it is, uh, or the PPK or PKK, I think it is, and they're like, wow, we, we, they're considered a terrorist group, so, we, you know, they're willing to fight for their own country. You even have, like, a whole bunch of women, like, real feminists, you know, with AK-47s who are going to fight against the ISIS guys, and, and uh, the reason why they're doing this is not so much that they just love their country and everything, of course, that's a big part of it, but they're doing this because uh, for an ISIS fighter to be killed by a woman uh, is, is a major, major, like, it's, it's, it'd be the worst thing that can happen to them. They don't get their 72 virgins. I mean, there's nobody says these 72 virgins up there, if there's 72 virgins up there. They don't say if they're male or female. Like, can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got your, like, uh, jihadist, yay, gonna, he gets killed, yay, gonna go get my 72 virgins, and it's like, this is the San Francisco section of the uh, 72 virgins. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it'd be like, super. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you could only you could only hope something like that would happen, eh? bastard. Uh, but anyway, uh, it would be funny. But anyway, uh, not so funny is that the, uh, so you got all these people that are willing to fight, but they won't arm those people. I mean, these uh, you know like they watched. Uh, I can't remember who did. It might have been Al Shazir did it or whatever did a thing on them. And it's like these women they're basically running out of ammo. They're you know like all the ragtag uh, groups over there that basically you know they they make do with what they got. So they're asking the U.S. to arm them. Okay, uh, because they they are obviously at odds with ISIS, you know, and basically ISIS again being different tribe. You got Sunni Sunni and Alawites and stuff like that. You've even got uh, yeah, there's everybody in there. There's probably about fifty different groups of of jihadists there, you know, like in, including some extra Republican Guard. There's everybody there, and their goal is basically to overthrow Assad. And even at that, you got to ask yourself, okay. Uh, you know, Assad keeps, he's holding them on, like, his troops are holding holding off ISIS, okay? So, and, and think about Syria in general, how poorly it's armed in comparison to, say, the United States or Canada or the Brits. You know, like, they're really got, you know, you know, old Soviet technology. They don't have very, very super advanced stuff. And they're holding off ISIS. You know, they're making more gains. So, uh, what, th this is this is kind of a polarizes. It's saying, well, if Assad with his ragtag military... Uh, slightly better equipped than the ISIS guys. If they're basically making gains and holding off ISIS, how the heck can, you know, like the U.S. not, like, wipe out these ISIS guys in, like, a week or two? You know what I mean? Which, one of the things is, is that, uh, and Vice did a really good documentary on it, uh, about, I uh, uh, forget who it was, I sent me the link there, but anyway, it was a really good link. It was about an hour long, and it really just shows you the mentality of the people there. That's why you're not going to be able to... It's, it's, it's a whole cultural thing. It's, it's basically... It's Sharia law, and it's just the tribe... You might as well call the Islamic State the tribe that... You know, uh, it's a multitude of tribes that have, have joined together in the Islamic State. Basically, New Ottoman Empire. Only instead of coming out of Turkey, it's, it's now coming out of Iraq. Uh, and, you know, Syria and stuff like that. So again, so facades, you know, with the help of the Iranians is basically holding off ISIS with outdated equipment. You know, it, it makes you ask the question, well, uh, how come, the, you know, now mind you, he's got boots on the ground in official official capacity, but still it makes people think, okay, well, how come they can make these gains with the limited resources they have and, uh, you know, the, the, the more advanced militaries, you know, keep losing to them, keep accidentally dropping uh, weapons to ISIS and stuff. So it, it comes clear, it's, they're not accidentally dropping weapons to ISIS. Uh, and it, this is not just one occasion. I mean, this was even on the CBC showing that the, uh, you know, the airdrop that went to ISIS saying it was an accident. But this is like 10, 15 times this has happened, right? So it's clearly not an accident. I mean, think about the sophistication of a uh, Globemaster, uh, C, uh, C-17 Globemaster or... Uh, you know, big heavy lift aircraft. They got GPS. They've got you know, <clears throat> you know, all, all kinds of extremely uh, you know payload calculators, payload drop. Uh, you know, th these guys are going to be pretty professional at dropping things pretty precisely uh, where they're needed. So to say that they, you know, the, you know, the crews are oh well, it was Iraqi crew flying these uh, uh, CT-17s. Uh, you know, the big heavy lift Globemasters, and <clears throat> and. Uh, they basically, 
you know, accidentally keep dropping to ISIS. Well, number one, you know, fire those pilots, put some competent people in there. And number two, considering the price of the Globemaster uh, heavy lift aircraft, you're not just going to have some, you know, uh, Iraqi noob pilot flying this thing. These are, you know, he, you know, these are billion, you know, millions and millions of dollars of equipment. Uh, you're going to have the best trained people flying them. So again, accidental drop, possible, but not 10 or 15 times in a row. So they're clearly arming ISIS. Now, uh, next to that, uh, getting back to Davos, you have uh, Bill Gates out there asking for, you know, again, a new world order. And it's, it's becoming more and more apparent, you know, the you know, one world currency, one world military. Uh, even have, um, I think it was a French newspaper, so I wasn't able, able to read the article, but it was actually on the Canadian Shooting Sports uh, Association page. And basically the United Nations has actually been arming Boko Haram. Uh, they are basically... You know, again, uh, all the all these jihadi groups. You know, again, where do they get the? Why do they never run out of ammo? Why do you know who's feeding them? Who's housing them? That type of stuff. You know, where do they keep getting these weapons? Again, an AK in the jungle will last a long time, but eventually it's going to run out. You know, I mean, it's going to run out of ammo. So how do these guys keep getting more ammo? Because they're not making like none of these groups make the stuff. They don't make the stuff. You know, so somebody's giving it to them, right? So. Again, these jihadists are so poor to begin with, if they had to pay for their own rifles, they wouldn't be able to afford them. You know, they can barely afford to eat, let alone buy a rifle. You know what I mean? So again, somebody's giving them stuff. So the UN has actually been arming Boko Haram. But you have to understand, in Nigeria, uh, you know, China is basically friendly with Africa. You know, many African countries in Nigeria, Nigeria, I think, is the most populated African country and has lots and lots and lots of resources recently discovered. And China's in there. So, again, if they can destabilize the area, you know, the United States has been trying to get in there, but, you know, I, I don't think they're going to get in there in official capacity, but they can, you know, create terror by, you know, again, it, it, you know, just prop up the uh, the jihadists, right? So, with that, uh, you have all kinds of crazy things going on. Uh, just so much, I know I'm going to be forgetting a whole bunch of stuff, but it's just, just kind of get everybody up to speed of what's going on. Uh, more, more drills, uh, stuff like that. Uh, uh, again, more nuclear uh, weapons going, you know, Russia buying uh, an, another 50 missiles pretty soon. I don't know if they're getting them this year or the next couple of years, but, you know, intercontinental missiles. So they're clearly, clearly getting ready for, for you know, a big, big fight. So when that'll be, nobody knows. So next to that, uh, something that has happened, oh, probably about six months ago or more, is on my... Uh, satellite TV. Uh, I have Bell Canada's uh, or Bell, not Bell Express, but just Bell, uh, you know, satellite. And on channel 724 was used to be RT. It's no longer there. That channel doesn't exist anymore. And that was taken off a of Canadian TV. You know, there, and, and I can't find. And there's like 900 channels or whatever that you can surf, and I just can't find it anywhere. So, uh, so RT is no longer on that. Now they're talking about in the states of, you know, banning alternative media. Uh, so I, I would start with something like RT, I would imagine. Uh, but then it would probably go to stuff like this eventually, way down the list, you know. Uh, so basically, you'd have basically only state-run uh, media. Uh, I mean, again, look in the Ukraine. They're they're basically spent like something like two hundred million dollars under the. Ukrainian Freedom Act uh, resolution, House Resolution uh, 758, the one that basically declares war on Russia in a not so direct way, but our, our, uh, number 10 of the, the resolution pretty much does. And the Russians have also kind of countered, say, making NATO now the top threat to them. So they've kind of declared war. Uh, you know, you know, if a war breaks out, it's already, you know, the de declaration is there. So it again, not so direct language, but when you understand it in lawyer speak. Uh, it, you understand what they're, they're, they're talking about. So even with that, uh, they were talking about putting like $200 million worth of, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, media propaganda in the Ukraine, you know, to be, you know, pro-West. They do this all over the place. There's nothing new. It's been going on for years, you know, since, you know, pretty much from the first radio, there's been propaganda, right? Uh, you know, I, again, Marconi. <laughs> you know, go back to Marconi, right? Uh, getting that, you know, telegraphing that signal across the Atlantic, uh, Hey, geez, you know, I wonder what the first message was, <laughs> you know, how was the weather over there, who knows. Uh, but yeah, you know, from that time on, you know, it's been used as a tool uh, to inform, but also to deceive, so that, that's that's what media does. So we got to keep watching on stuff like that. Of course, we got here an anti-terrorism bill that erodes more uh, charters of rights and freedoms here in Canada, which is basically our Bill of Rights. And basically, this new bill is basically going to allow 
more like basically indefinite detention. Right now, it was at uh, uh, the RCMP could just or CSIS guys could just pick you up uh, for three days uh, without warrant, uh, without telling what you're being charged with, and could hold you for three days. Now, I think that's going to change. I haven't went through the whole thing. Um, kind of been busy again through the week, and I haven't been able to. And it, the bills only got tabled, I think, uh, last week. So. It, you know, I'm sure all the scary... It's probably going to be as scary as you would think it is. Uh, next to that, we've had a, a strange thing happen in... Uh, I think it was around Windsor or someplace around that, where the RCMP, which is like basically like the equivalent of the FBI in the States, uh, they're the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. There was a lady that was murdered, uh, or they suspected murdered, uh, and they went door to door getting collecting people's DNA voluntarily, basically going saying, well, you know, we're looking for a murderer, so... I, and, and they've done that up here in Canada. And people went along with it. Now, apparently a few people may have refused. I don't know what the action was, but that to me is a gross uh, over... You, you can't state enough how much of a violation of, of uh, you know, rights that is. Uh, unlawful search and seizure. Uh, that basically you have to be... Uh, the, the idea of a warrantless search or a warrantless... Uh, for taking of your property or whatever, uh, which, you know, your DNA is a part of your property, that's your person's. Uh, you know, that, that's such a slippery slope. But most people, they, when they give the, these things up, they don't realize what they're giving up. They don't, you know, because most people will do it just to be good. You know, it's like, well, if you want to catch a murderer, yeah, here you go. But they don't realize that they should say, well, you know, you might want to go get a warrant. I'll gladly give it to you, but please go get a warrant. Follow due process, because that's what I would do. I'd say, I'd love to give you my DNA, but please go get a warrant, just so you remember that there's a process there, you know, uh, that type of thing. You know, if it's going to help catch a murderer, sure, why not? But also, too, the other argument is, is when somebody refuses, and they say, hey, well, no, you can't have this. Well, they can't just take it from you. They have to have a reason. They can say, well, I'll go get a warrant. But to get a warrant, you have to have... A, you know, a reasonable suspicion. So uh, basically saying, okay, well, we've found, you know, footprints that went to this guy's house. Okay, so that, that's, you, you can make an argument on that, you know, you know it's, okay, so you follow this footprint all the way to, you know, this is an example, uh, to, to the, you know, from the murdered victim's house to, to the, this, you know, to the murderer's house. Okay, well, go get a warrant. There you go, you'll get that. But other than that, if you don't have, you know, this a while, we're, we're just going on a hunch that we're going to try everybody on the city block you know, in five city blocks to see if we can, uh, you know, get lucky. That, well, that's called a dragnet. You can't have that. So those are things that are just kind of going on here. Next to that, uh, again, in Davos you have, you know, uh, you know, your, your, you know, Bill Gates and stuff like that. And he's agreeing with Stephen Hawking and many other science, uh, Hawkins, uh, and many other scientists saying that, uh, Artificial intelligence might be a problem in the future. Um, this is something that uh, Adolf Hitler talked about, uh, basically over-industrializing, basically letting technology become too efficient. You'll actually make people, uh, you know, human workers obsolete. And this is something he talked about. And then, of course, there's the infamous Einstein saying of uh, World War III. He didn't know what weapons would be used in World War III, but World War IV would definitely be fought with sticks and stones, you know, because, you know, the, the weapons can become so powerful. And... The, uh, you know, when, when you look around the world, it, it's, it's kind of like, okay, well, the weapons are getting so out of control, and they're just all over the place. Now, there was a video I had watched. Somebody found it again and sent it to me, one of my, my uh, uh, regular viewers. And it was a guy saying, well, World War III is going to happen, but not the way most people think. A lot of people think, he, what he was saying was, uh, it's going to be most likely, he says, what he thinks most likely is going to be like a, a radical jihadist getting a hold of a, a nuke, probably from like, a, a, you know, Pakistan or India. India. Which I can see that, you know, I could see I could see a military coup happening in one of those two countries, uh, and you know you just get the wrong, or the you know the right whack jobs, and, you know together they overtake the uh, the nukes. Pakistan launches at India, India launches at Pakistan. Next thing you know, you got fireworks going off anywhere, or they launch at the states, or they launch here, they launch there, whatever. Uh, also, too, Russia is also starting to you know, make more deals with North Korea to help out North Korea. So I don't know if this means they'll start giving North Korea uh, nuclear weapons just to kind of... Uh, and this is something that I had said, and if I, if I didn't say, I'm pretty sure I said this, but watch Russia start just arming everybody. Uh, again, the United States has like 700 and something military bases around the world. Russia has about 10, but now, you know, they're into Cuba. Again, Obama, just think about it. Obama out of nowhere. I mean, this wasn't something he built up for months and months on end. Obama out of nowhere, oh, we're, we're just going to drop the uh, uh, sanctions on Cuba because sanctions don't work. Meanwhile, we're going to put, on the same day, he 
puts more sanctions against Russia. You know, so 50 years of sanctions didn't work against Cuba, so let's ramp up the, you know, <laughs> ramp up the sanctions to Russia. But what he doesn't tell you is that the Russians are basically moving, are you know, basically paid off 90% of Cuba's debt to them, and they're basically going to be opening up military bases if it, if they're not already open up in Cuba. Now I'm sure they've had bases there before. We all know about the Cuban Missile Crisis, but I think it's going to ramp up a bit more. Now also too, Russia's also, uh, because of the sanctions, although they're not debilitating Russia to the point, uh, again, you know, they're not in the same spot they were back in the 90s when they supposedly collapsed. I say they never collapsed. I think they just, you know, are doing what the Americans are doing now, just covertly, basically taking the money from the public uh, and, and just putting it into the industrial military complex. So that That's, you know, again, we see it here. Look, we, we close... Uh, uh, you know, they're going to basically, you know, for Canadian veterans, for example, here, the government's like, okay, well, we're going to give 200 and some odd million dollars to Canadian veterans over like a 50 year period or something like that. And, uh, but yet we're going to throw $200 million to the Ukraine, uh, adding up $400 million, like overnight, you know what I mean? And apparently this is a loan. Like, okay, this makes no sense because think about it this way. Okay. Let's say your neighbor, okay, is really bad with his money always broke, never pays his rent on time, behind in all his bills, and you know this, and he comes up to you and says, can I borrow 500 bucks? I'll pay you back, honest. And are you going to give him that? Saying, okay, I believe he's, you know. No, well, the Ukraine is that neighbor. <laughs> you know, they're not necessarily a neighbor, but you get the idea. Uh, you know, why would you be investing in the Ukraine? Well, if we look at, you know, basically the Ukraine basically got taken over by the IMF bankers uh, and the U.S. interests, uh, you know, I, I don't know where Canada is going to fit in the Ukraine because we're, we're putting an awful lot of investment in there. Uh, and I don't exactly know what. I think it's going to have something to do with the mining and gas sector for sure. Uh, but it could be other things too. And again, uh, more sanctions that go on Russia. Uh, Russia, you know, in the 90s when it collapsed, it had a massive amount of debt. It doesn't now. It actually has a surplus. So, yeah, it's taken a hit, but it hasn't taken the hit you would think uh, because, you know, they, you know, they can weather the storm is what I'm saying. And... Although they have sanctions making trade a little bit harder, what they're doing now with, for example, Argentina is they're giving Argentina fighter jets for food. So, I mean, it's, they've got resources to barter and trade with. So, you know, but I, I'm thinking you're going to see like a massive military buildup throughout South America, throughout Africa, and basically anywhere, you know, basically to counter any U.S. aggression. So it's basically, think about it this way, rather than... Uh, How's the best way? It's, it's a ta warfare tactic where what you do is you want to basically overwhelm your opponent with the least amount of, of casualties to yourself. So the best thing to do is just have other countries, proxy countries basically, uh, destabilize. So now they have to put surveillance throughout all, you know, it spreads everybody thin. Basically, they have to put the surveillance now in the, you know, the tanks on the Mexican border, so to speak, you know what I mean, which we're not there yet, but it's coming. Uh, you know, all South America is pretty much communist dictators and cartels, right? So, uh, running the places. So, you know, there's a lot of corruption down there. But you're getting all these other people that are starting in South America starting to play favorably, definitely to China and Russia. And China pretty much owns the world right now. So, with that going on, I mean, you, you, it's not a far stretch to see that, okay, well, the best thing uh, for Russia to do to really kind of, you know, get back at uh, the United States from Ukraine. Uh, you know, and, and putting all the, you know, basically arming the Ukraine, what they're probably most likely going to do is arm the crap out of, of uh, Cuba. Most likely, you're, this is why I said Cuba will be destroyed because of Obama's decision. Again, everywhere they go to help, you know, you know, and of course Obama's saying, yeah, you know, he's talking about amnesty from Cuba and stuff like that too, which, you know, it's to destroy the states as well, uh, to get that one world government in. And here's what I could see probably in the near future is seeing Topol M's just mysteriously end up in Cuba. Uh, Topol M's being mobile missile launchers. And they will be Russian. They will have Russian flags on them. These will not be Cubans. These will be Russians doing war games there. So that will definitely... They'll probably play that card after an incident of some sort. Uh, you know, again, you know, something that will come out in the public say, well, you know, the Americans have just now... Uh, armed uh, the Ukrainians, uh, you know, with tanks or something and, and stuff like that. Uh, and then Russia's counter will be, well, you know, you're arming your friends, we're arming ours, you know. You know, what's the problem, you know? You have a nice day. Here's a nice little topolem. You can destroy city. Yeah, yeah, it'll make it very hot in the south. Have a nice day. <laughs> yeah. So th that's what I see happening there. Again, 
with... We'll have to wait for that. Again, Putin hasn't played the wild man card yet. Uh, basically, we've seen tons of missile tests, you know, almost on a monthly basis now. Uh, there's some more Iskander missile tests coming up in the spring. These things can be, you know, armed with several types of warheads. They could be uh, chemical, they could be conventional, or they could be nuclear. You know, you know, so that they, they can do that uh, th with those, and they're going to test these missile systems again. Again, as a show of force, uh, there's also going to be a land bridge between the Crimea and Russia. Uh, it's it's just this, it's something like 11 kilometers or something, or uh, about 9 miles uh, from or eight miles or so from, you know, they basically they can get around, uh, it'll be a corridor straight into the Crimea. And uh, the bridge is supposed to be built by 2018 or something like that. So that, that's, you know, the Russians are definitely going to have their, their connection there. Uh, it will be a fragile connection because it will be easy, e easy to take out a bridge that there. But, you know, that way they can get their stuff there quickly. You know, right now they're probably just using a ferry, I would imagine, to get the stuff into the Crimea. And of course, we have Topol M's there. Uh, this is why, like, Topol M's, uh, you know, like, people, some people have commented on my videos, say, look, those things shoot, like, you know, 11,000, you know, they have, like, an 8,000 mile range, you know, 8 to 11,000 mile range. You know, why would they put them there? Well, it's the show of force. It's not so much the range that's really the issue there. It's, it's the 10 warheads <laughs> that can, you know, basically destroy the entire Ukraine, you know, and Poland and, 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 you know. So that, that's why they're there. <laughs> you know, the same way, the same, you know, it's not so much just the range of the missiles that's the threat, it's what they're carrying. I mean, if they were carrying Cocoa Puffs on it, nobody would care, right? But they're, they're not, they're carrying, you know, thermonuclear warheads. So those are still there. Uh, next to that, uh, the Ukrainian military is kind of like on an all-out offensive all over, you know, Mariupol and Donetsk and, you know, pretty much that whole right down to... Uh, to Odessa, pretty much, there's all these pockets of fighting. They've taken the airport in uh, Mariupol. Um, you know, they, they were kind of saying, well, because of uh, they, they wanted to make sure Russians weren't able to supply the uh, the rebels and whatever. Uh, plus, they're having a draft that a lot of people are. They're, they're trying to draft another fifty thousand people, give them about two to three weeks of training, and they put them on the front lines pretty much after that. And there were reports. I don't know how true this one is. Take it with a grain of salt. Like everything, always do your own research, but they were saying that there were Ukrainian troops that were being forced into the fight, and this kind of goes back to almost like World War II where they used to do this. And basically, if they didn't move advanced forward, maybe not, you know, like kind of like World War II, if they try to retreat from the fight, their own guys were actually behind them, shooting at them, you know. So, take that one with a grain of salt, that may be true, that may not be true, but I can kind of see it happen. Uh, peace talks have obviously failed again. Um... This, I think the spring offensive is going to be, uh, that's going to be a pretty noticeable globally. People won't be able to keep their heads in the sand. You know, I mean, there's only so much you can be distracted by, like, uh, you know, inflate gate, you know, football, you know. Again, if people put as much effort and uh, concern into, you know, like, things like, uh, you know, Super Bowl, uh, football not being inflated properly, uh, as they would their, you know, corrupt politicians and stuff like that, we'd have a much better world. But it's a lot easier to deal with the other things, right? So... But it gives you an idea of how blindsided people, you know, if they, you know, because they don't follow this stuff, so they have no idea what's going on in the world. And because of that, you know, ignorance isn't bliss, and yes, it will hurt you. So that, that's one of the things that a lot of people are, are you know, they're going to be caught off guard. So when I make these videos, one thing I always tell people is put food away. It's the most important weapon you can have. You can barter with it. You can trade with it. You can eat it, obviously. It's, you know, uh, it keeps you from going out and traveling into dangerous areas should bad, worse things happen. Uh, next to that, getting into the bankers. Uh, looks like there was a mad Russian banker went and shot up a place. I don't know which bank it was again. Uh, this was last week or the week before. And another banker died in, what was it, New York? I can't remember, a couple of days ago. Uh, another suicide. So I don't have all the details on it. Uh, but again, you know, these people... Yeah, mental illness can hit anybody, depression can hit anybody, but these are people that don't typically have problems, you, you know, normal people problems. Uh, they're not worried about their next meal, they're not worried about not paying their rent on time and stuff like that. So these people, you know, they have several luxury yachts, they have this, they have that, they have mansions, you know, money falling out their ears, you know, that type of thing. So these people don't have normal people problems. So for them to be getting so-called uh, suicidal is... Not an impossibility, but in these large, large numbers, again, dead men tell no tales. So we'll have to wait and see kind of 
watch the bankers dropping like flies. And of course, you have, uh, you know, all the uh, crazy stuff happening in Greece. You know, we'll have to watch to see what happens there. Uh, I don't think the new party is going to be... I think there's gonna, it's, it's a disaster no matter which way you go. But they could set the trend because they were talking about uh, getting out of the United Nations, getting out of uh, NATO, and getting out of the EU. Whether they'll do that or not, it's hard to say. You know, it's hard to say they'll, they'll do that. But if they do that, others it might create a you know domino effect. So going from there, uh, on the banking thing, going back to Davos, for example, uh, they were talking you know about you know a global uh, you know, carbon tax, and again, this whole global warming thing. Uh, Lord uh, Mon Moncton, Moncton, Lord Moncton, Ruxton. Anyway, uh, I think it's Lord Moncton. Uh, he, when you listen to this guy speak, you know, he brings up some excellent questions about the whole global warming thing, and it's basically uh, the 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 U.S. the GOP. You had the Young Turks out there talking about, you know, how uh, the GOP agrees, you know, to get the Keystone Pipeline passed. They basically uh, had to agree that there was climate change, which is kind of a funny thing because climate always changes. I mean, you know, this morning is not the same temperature it is right now. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's tomorrow will be different temperatures. Uh, Ten years from now, there's going to be different temperatures. You know what I mean? Like, it, that type of thing. But what he says is the whole climate model thing is basically a sham. Uh, using the feedback loop, he says it, it's, it doesn't work. It's not, the way they, they've got it, it doesn't work that way. And that's why... And that's what they're basing the whole uh, global warming theory on. So uh, you have to understand, a lot of people make money out of that, like Al Gore. And Al Gore was out there at Davos as well, talking about, you know, you know, more basically, you know, global warming BS and carbon tax, uh, basically a, a global carbon tax. And we've already got it here in Quebec and stuff like that. And basically, Karl Marx summed it up years ago. Progressive taxing is to, to basically tax people off their property. And you, basically, you can corral them into the tax their wealth away so that you have to corral them into the cities. You know, uh, basically Agenda 21 stuff, right? So, uh, so, but that, that, that was the idea behind the progressive tax, was to make everybody progressively more poor. So, with that said, it doesn't mean all taxation is bad, but, you know, people have to, you know, basically live within their means. You know, you can't sell the future to live it better now, and that's what we're dealing with. So, you have all these people out there talking about how the common man should basically lower their carbon footprint and pay more taxes. Uh, meanwhile, something like 1,700 private jets flew to Davos. You know, and again, you have like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and stuff like that, you know, you know, talking about global warming and carbon footprint. Meanwhile, he's on his like, you know, 72-foot yacht with the, you know, twin mercs, <laughs> you know, the size of uh, refrigerators in it, you know, <laughs> you know, burning something like 25 gallons an hour or something or 100 gallons an hour. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, got the exhaust ported right into the water. You know, you know, choke out some of them dolphins. You know what I'm saying? So you got these people, these hypocrites, always, always talking about that. And these are the people that are usually the bigger polluters. You know, but they're worried about the guy who might throw a candy bar on the side of the road or something like that. You know, recycle your pop cans, that type of thing. Not that that's bad, but you get the idea. Like they don't, you know, they, you know, the what's called the the, the uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico uh, oil spill, uh, the you know, Exxon Mobil, uh, Exxon Valdez, that type of, you know, the, these big companies, like, you know, they get a slap on the wrist, you know, and when they get fined, it's basically the taxpayer that pays the fine for them. So, obviously, there's no accountability, you know. Uh, so, this whole global warming thing is, and of course, uh, they want to use that again to, you know, basically, it's a control mechanism, you know, and they're talking about it uh, as, you know, that everybody has to go on on you know on this global carbon tax so you got your bill gates and stuff like that out there talking about this and the reason why they're saying this is that the only way we can get this done is if we have a one world government so uh, uh lisa haven if you she has a neat channel she did a thing uh and it was like a 40 page doc document or whatever talking about what the new world order is it was a de defining of the new world order and basically it's all terrifying stuff but this is an actual legal a U.S. document. Again, you look at George Bush uh, uh, Sr. with his glazed look over his eyes, going to have this new world order, and it's going to be shiny. You know, <laughs> and uh, I remember the first time I heard that new world order speech, there was just something that, I was like, I didn't know what it was back then. I mean, it was back in the 90s, you know, when I was a teenager or whatever. And I was like, that's such a weird, offbeat speech. Like, it was just, there was just something weird about it. You know, it's not that I was like, okay, you know, but he just kept going on about this new world 
world order and we're all going to be happy in this new world order and people are going to join this new world order yeah yeah creepy <laughs> but anyway and then of course we had war ever since in this new world order anyway so uh but i guess that's about all i know i'm forgetting a bunch of other things there's so much going on again watch what iran's doing they're they're starting to kind of mobilize a bit um and again the saudis with the the, the uh, king abdullah dying if he wasn't knocked off and again is, can anybody answer me the question is prince bandabar still alive like uh, where did the guy go like where did he go like is he still alive or not because uh, I, I heard one report a couple of months ago he was sick and nobody knows where he went it's kind of like Kim Jong-un when he disappeared uh, for a couple of months in the hospital. you got to wonder, you know, these people, you know, they knock each other off like, you know, small bits of arsenic poison in their food for the next 10 years type of thing, you know, slow kill. Uh, uh, it's been known to be done. Oh, and uh, of the Russian spies that were caught in New York, apparently they were caught poisoning a diplomat or something like that with uh, radioactive isotopes. And, of course, these diplomats went all over the place, you know, to plays and movie theaters and, you know, all kinds of places like that. So, you know, they could have irradiated a lot of people. Uh, they, that's a very old kind of Soviet Cold War, early Cold War One kind of era stuff that you, they used to do uh, with the spies. So we're seeing spies all over the place kind of popping up. Uh, and, again, every, you know, they're using it to pass more and more. Uh, you know, anti-terrorism bill and stuff like that, and who can we call a terrorist, who can't we call a terrorist, pretty much every, the, 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 this, I love it when people say, you conspiracy guys are, you know, theory guys are so paranoid, but the thing is, is we're, I'm talking about conspiracy fact, there's nothing I've pretty much said in this video that isn't past tense, you know, and openly admitted, so to me, I'm like, we're not the paranoid ones, it's the people that want to bring in all these uh, anti-terrorism laws and just kind of make everybody a criminal at this, you know, and shut down freedom of speech. And, and, and those are the paranoid ones, <laughs> you know, not us, you know. Uh, but anyway, I guess I'll leave it at that. So, um, let's see if there was anything else. Like, again, try to jam a, a week's worth of info into one video. Again, I was just so busy this week passing with all the snow and everything and just shovel and look, my arms are like super, super long now. My shoulders are still killing me. And, of course, I was a dude with a jig last night, so dancing with the ladies was always fun. Uh, getting some of the cabin fever out. And, uh, yeah, so I didn't have time to post uh, many videos this week, so hopefully this week coming won't be quite as busy, and I'll keep on top of things, and a lot of things we'll have to watch. So I guess I'm going to leave it at that. So uh, please consider making a donation to the channel. It helps the channel out. You think of it as investing in the channel to, you know, you know, the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. So better video content, uh, you know, uh, possibly even a podcast at some point, uh, that type of thing. Uh, you know, because I'm limited with my internet that I have now. Uh, again, I'm not going to stop making videos or anything like that. But if, you know, if I, if I can get enough to take it to the next level, it will almost be like Reggie Radio. I think that would be cool. And uh, next to that, you know, I do put a lot of effort into, you know, I make a one-hour video, but I might spend, you know, five, six hours or a week you know, God knows how much time I put into getting the information. So, to me, I see it as value. And I know that a lot of people do like these kind of videos because it does connect a lot of dots. And not only that, you don't really... I don't know of too many other people that kind of do it the way I do it. There's a lot of guys that kind of talk the same talk of topics. But they'll, like, here's the one topic and they just run that. Me, I, I kind of bring the ADD kind of into it, uh, give you the, the breakdown of a few things, and then bring in all the other things to watch out. And, again, you start to see the bigger picture of, you know what's going on well this you know this plays out while this is playing out which you know two plus two don't make five it makes four and stuff like that so it takes a lot of time to do that so again investing in the channel is a good idea and thank you very much to everybody who has i, I can't really reply back on my paypal uh, to the actual people that do donations i'm at about 170 bucks right now so uh, i'm, I'm going to hang on to that and when i get a sizable amount uh, i'll probably put a poll to you guys of what to best first spend it on you know like a you know Obviously, my top priority is getting unlimited internet so that I can, and then after that, maybe a domain name, but maybe a domain name might be a better idea first, but that, you know, I don't want to just get a domain name, you know, I want to, if I'm going to have my own website, I want to make sure it's a really good, uh, you know, website where people can even advertise uh, their products on, you know, related to, you know, kind of like a way InfoWars kind of sets it up a bit, uh, and, you know, make it big, and then, of course, you know, move that towards, like a, like a talk show, radio 
type thing uh, and make it big, right? But humble beginnings. So again, for those who have donated, thank you very, very, very much. It's much appreciated. Uh, next to that, rate, subscribe, share, comment, like. Don't forget to go over to my uh, WW3 uh, updates page, Facebook updates page, WW3 uh, updates uh, Facebook page. There you can post links on, uh, you know, basically anything related to the geopolitical of World War III or financial, uh, you know, the financial collapse, because we're kind of living through it. We're documenting it as we're living through it, right? Uh, and also, don't forget to put some food away, because that's, a, you know, that's a, that's, you know, some people do gold, silver. I'm more of a bread and bullets kind of guy, but uh, food is always a good investment. If I'm, you know, if nothing happens, it's still a good investment. You, you know, you're always going to use it. Next to that, rate, subscribe, share, comment, like. Uh, by all means, please comment. I, you know, it's one of the best things about YouTube. I can't stress that enough. Is that people can participate in the comments. Uh, you know, and again, you can put any links down below uh, that's related to uh, the geopolitical. If you think it's relevant, throw it down because I, even if I can't get to all my links, a lot of times there's a lot of stuff. that was like, oh, hey, good link. You know what I mean? I didn't notice that. You know, and a lot of great things. Can, you know, the more information I get, the more information I can give to you guys. So we're like one big happy family, a big team. Thumbs up. All right, so I guess I'll leave it at that. So uh, be true to yourself, be true to others, and always, always do the right thing. Have a great day. Can't reach it. Good day, hey, hi, and welcome. Uh, I've done a video in a couple of days. Like, what happened? Where'd you go? And uh, yes, yeah, so I've been pretty busy, so uh, wasn't able to get out some videos. And uh, last night there was a shindig at the hall, so I didn't do any videos yesterday. So and today I'm in recovery. <laughs> So, and it's cold. It's cold in the house. That's why I got my two gun. Uh, got me here. So, okay. So, World War Three update. Uh, so much to cover here. Hopefully, I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, I'll try to hit the points, and then I might repeat myself if, like I normally do. Uh, Canada is sending another 200 million, uh, totaling 400 million, uh, to the Ukraine. Uh, you know, again, you're, you know, we have to retire when we're 67 here in Canada, but yet we we have all the spare money to throw into the Ukraine for whatever reason. Uh, there's also been, uh, you know, recent activity with, uh, you know, English-speaking mercenaries that were, uh, you know, pretty much running around in the Ukraine as well. You have the Blackwater guys, they've been there for months, uh, pretty much since this whole thing started. You also have Putin, or not Putin, but uh, a Russian general out there saying, hey, look, uh, the weapons they have, like the S-300, the S-400, and the S-500 missile systems, is nothing compared to what their their secret weapons. Uh, uh, and they're saying that uh, there's not a single nuclear weapon, or even the new secret advanced stuff uh, that the Americans have that could stop uh, their weapons. Uh, some of their warheads, which Russia is now going to be getting another 50 missiles. Uh, I don't, I can't remember what the delivery time is. Um, uh, 50 nuclear missiles. So, and these warheads that they have also have decoys in them. Uh, not the warhead itself, but there's like warheads and decoy warheads to, uh, so anything like a Patriot missile system coming up to meet it, uh, it might be just shooting at a dud, stuff like that. And there's also, uh, these missiles can actually outmaneuver, uh, or may, I don't know how well they maneuver, but they, they also can maneuver as they're coming in, making them almost impossible to hit. So we don't know what these secret weapons are, but Russia's saying, yeah, well, we know, we know that the, the Americans have been doing the Star Wars program for a long time, so, you know, they, they've taken precautions. And remember, uh, the United States' is number one ally in the Middle East, uh, Israel, uh, is also sold, you know, uh, U.S. military technology to China over the years. They, you know, they, they, they get it given to them uh, by the U.S., and then they turn around and they just give it to the, uh, sell it to the, uh, to the Chinese. So that means they're probably selling it to the Russians as well. Uh, on top of that, we also have, uh, you know, more drills, spies kind of showing up everywhere. There was some spies, I think, in New York caught Russian spies. Uh, remember a few weeks ago or a, few, a month or so ago, uh, Prime Minister Harper was talking about uh, uh, looking for spies in our, um, our war games and stuff like that. Uh, it's a big concern. So we're seeing that ramp up, and then of course with the economic stuff, with the uh, the oil prices expected to go lower. They're, again, Saudi Arabia can drop it down to like four bucks a barrel and still make a profit. That, that, you know, uh, the other thing too is that you know uh, the uh, oil going down has hurt Russia, but it hasn't hurt them as quite as bad as you think. Uh, Greece is talking about. <clears throat> I think is he, Greece or Spain? I think Spain. Sorry, is talking about lifting the sanctions on Russia. Uh, they're also, you have to understand that the new party that, or sorry, Greece, uh, the new party in Greece is a communist party. Uh, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, the, the guy, maybe, I don't know if they're all in that, but the guy running it, the, I can't remember his name, but uh, Stefan Molino did a really nice uh, kind of, uh, hi, you know, history breakdown. So basically, these are the extreme left. Uh, so I, I can't see how that could possibly go wrong, but <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and they're, they're talking about, you know, like, you know, getting out of sanctions and with Russia and stuff like that. So it looks like uh, they made a deal with Russia that if they need some help financially, that Russia might come to come and help them. And the Russians said, they, they said, yes, I don't know what the deal is going to be, you know, if they're going to forgive debt, if they're going to, you know, monetize the debt. I, I have no idea what, what the deal is, but they've been talking. So we're seeing, again, a slow breakup of the uh, EU. And you had Ireland out there, uh, people in Ireland out there, uh, you know, basically protesting austerity and stuff like that. Again, people are around the world. We're in a global depression. And, of course, right on the mainstream media, uh, we have the CBC out there saying, look, all the growth that we had in Canada is not quite as good as what we said it was over the last past year. Uh, instead of, you know, you know, creating uh, uh, something like 20,000 jobs a, a month, we were only creating like something like 15 or 10. I can't remember the, the exact, but anyway, the, the unemployment is much higher than what they said. It's, you know, over 6.7, don't quote me on the number, something like that. So again, we have all this lying that's going on, and of course, in the States, there's a retail apocalypse going on there, uh, just layoffs everywhere. It's, it's store closures. Uh, the uh, Baltic, uh, I think it's called the Baltic Dry Index, don't quote me on that. Uh, basically, it's all like stuff like copper, steel, uh, lumber. Uh, all those things that, that this is the one thing uh, that they can't really manipulate because it's like you know either you sold it or you didn't you know it's not like gold where they sell uh, they sell gold uh, uh, what's called uh, futures contracts where they get um, basically an IOU slip and you, you hang on to that and say I got X Y Z bars of gold but you know they have like one bar of gold with like twenty names on it and we have more gold flying around into you know places like Switzerland to get melted down into. Uh, the Chinese denominations and stuff like that. And, of course, uh, the Swiss have done, you know, depegging from the euro and now kind of, again, becoming, getting ready to, to do business with the Chinese. Uh, again, we're seeing people jump ship. I mean, the, 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 the Titanic has hit the iceberg pretty hard. Uh, the band's still playing, but the ship is still going down. And that's, I think, the battle lines are being drawn now of who's going to stay neutral, who's going to pick this side, who's going to pick the other side. Uh, and, again, there won't be any, an all-out economic collapse uh, in my opinion, until actual war comes, because that's how they hide the collapse, right? And uh, the thing is, is that uh, what I've been saying for the last past, pretty much since 2008, or maybe 2010 when I started making geopolitical videos, is that the collapse wasn't going to be like your typical 1929 stock market collapse, where it's it's just brutally obvious, and you know who did it. Uh, and, you know, all these people, you can say, okay, well, they did this to us, and we can put them in jail. It's going to be more of a slow bleed-out, where everybody's just becoming gradually more poor. And, of course, in Davos, uh, I didn't catch any too much highlights from Davos, but I got, got a few of them. You have all these, you know, billionaires and, and stuff like that that are really, really worried. Uh, and something I've been talking about, and if you've been following my channel for a while, you've heard me say that the world's elites are buying, like, you know, getaway resorts and uh, uh, bunkers, and uh, you know they're they're really worried about like a pitchfork revolution coming for them. Uh, and these people, that's one of the things they were talking about in Davos. So you have okay, the mainstream media that's out there saying there's nothing to see here, nothing's wrong, but yet you've got the world's elites, the people. I mean, these are the people in the know. I mean, it doesn't mean they're all you know out there to conquer the world, but it does mean that they know they can see the trend. They they know what they're forecasting. You know, they're. they're buying extra security, they're, uh, uh, you know, basically getting ready to hide their families, they're stockpiling on resources 